Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're diving deep into these mysterious signals from space. You know, the ones we've detected beyond our planet. We're going to try and figure out what they might mean. It's going to get pretty wild. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Pask Van Podcasts. Ready to unravel some cosmic mysteries? Absolutely. The universe is, well, it's full of unexplained phenomena. And these signals, you know, they offer a glimpse into the unknown. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so let's unpack this. We've all heard that question, are we alone? But when do we actually, like, formally start looking for answers? Well, the formal search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, it began in 1960, Project Ozma. Astronomer Frank Drake, he used a radio telescope to listen for signals from two nearby stars, actually, Epsilon Eridani and Tau Ceti. They didn't hear anything, you know, no alien transmissions, but it was a really important first step. So over 60 years, huh? What does modern SETI look like today? Oh, it's drastically different. Think massive telescopes like the Allen Telescope Array in California and China's FAST. That's the largest single aperture radio telescope in the world. These incredible instruments, they're constantly scanning, listening for signals that stand out from the natural background noise of space. Wow, that's amazing. But how do they even know what to look for? What kind of signals say, hey, this is artificial, this is intelligent? Mainly narrowband radio signals. Imagine tuning your radio, you hear static, right? That's the universe. But suddenly you get a clear, distinct signal on a specific frequency. That's what catches SETI's attention. They're unlikely to occur naturally. So, you know, if you detect one, it's a strong hint. An intentional broadcast from somewhere out there. So it's a needle in a haystack, but the needle is a very particular kind of radio wave. What about other types of signals? Like, I've heard about these fast radio bursts and stars that dim in strange ways. Are those on SETI's radar too? Absolutely. Fast radio bursts, we call them FRBs, incredibly powerful bursts of radio waves. Just milliseconds long they are. Yeah. Most seem to come from distant galaxies, probably from natural events like magnetars. Those are highly magnetized neutron stars. But, and here's where it gets really interesting, some FRBs, they repeat. And they repeat in ways we don't fully understand yet. Okay, you've got my attention. What kind of patterns are we talking about? And why are they so puzzling? Well, there's this one, FRB 121102. It repeats on a 157-day cycle. That precise timing you see, it's unlike anything we've seen from, you know, known astrophysical phenomena, leads some to speculate about, well, more exotic origins, let's say. Okay, so repeating FRBs could be artificial, maybe. We can't rule it out. These repeating signals, they raise more questions than answers, and that's what makes them so exciting for SETI researchers. They're like the universe is sending us a puzzle, and we're trying to figure out, you know, if someone's deliberately scrambling the pieces. Okay, so FRBs, and you also mentioned stars that dim strangely. What's up with that? Right. You're probably thinking of Tabby Star, officially known as KIC 8462852. This star, it dims. But in these strange patterns, initially, you know, totally baffled astronomers. Yeah. Weren't there theories about alien megastructures around that star? Yeah. One theory was that an alien megastructure was causing this dimming, something like a Dyson sphere, you know, built around the star to harness its energy. The Dyson sphere. Okay, that's straight out of science fiction. Was that ever confirmed? Well, as captivating as that thought is, further analysis suggested that the dimming is more likely due to, well, natural phenomena, maybe dust or cometary fragments, you know, orbiting the star. But but it's a great example of how these mysterious signals, they spark our imagination. You know, they make us question what else is out there. Yeah, it's a good reminder that we should explore all the possibilities, even the seemingly crazy ones, right? Speaking of mind-blowing signals, we can't forget the one that really, like, captured everyone's imagination, the wow signal. What's the story there? Ugh, the wow signal. Probably most famous SETI detection so far. Back in 1977, an astronomer, Jerry Eman, he was working with the Big Ear Radio Telescope, and he picked up this powerful signal from the constellation Sagittarius. It lasted 72 seconds, and it was so strong, so unique, that Eman literally wrote, wow, on the printout. Catchy name. So what made this signal so unique? Was it another narrowband signal? Yes, but with a very particular characteristic, a frequency of 1420 megahertz, which happens to be the same frequency as hydrogen's natural emission. Some scientists believe that this specific frequency could be a universal hailing frequency, like a logical choice for any civilization trying to communicate across, you know, interstellar distances. So it's like a universal language. Anyone with the right tech could understand it. Amazing. Exactly. But despite a lot of attempts to find it again, the wow 
Signal, well, it's never been detected again. The source, it's still a mystery. One of the most tantalizing enigmas in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It could have been a natural phenomenon we haven't seen before, or, well, the possibility of an artificial origin. It's still out there. Man, that really makes you wonder, what else is out there, hiding in the vastness of space? I'm betting governments are interested in these signals, too. What role do they play in all of this? Governments, they play a big role. They support the research, but they also, you know, address the potential national security implications of all these signals. So agencies like NASA, they contribute to SETI efforts through programs like, for example, astrobiology, which focuses on the origins and distribution of life in the universe. Astrobiology. What does that have to do with alien signals? It's all connected. See, understanding the conditions that allow life to thrive, even in really extreme environments here on Earth, well, it helps to inform the search for life beyond our planet. You know what I mean? So by studying extremophiles, those organisms that live in really harsh conditions, we get clues about what kinds of life might be possible in other, you know, seemingly inhospitable places. Exactly. It broadens our understanding of what life could look like and where it could exist. And that helps refine the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. So it's about expanding our understanding of life itself to inform our search for other intelligent life forms. Cool. But you also mentioned national security. What kind of concerns do governments have about these signals? OK, well, imagine you detect a signal. But this signal, it shows technology far beyond our own. That would raise some eyebrows, right? Especially for agencies responsible for national security. They got to figure out, are any of these signals a threat? I could see that. It'd be like running into a civilization that's, I don't know, centuries, millennia ahead of us. Yeah. A little unsettling. Right. That's why agencies like the Department of Defense, they're investing in really advanced signal processing, and they work with SETI researchers to analyze these signals and assess any potential risks. So it's a balance between scientific curiosity and national security. It makes sense. But OK, let's say hypothetically we confirm a signal, an alien signal, something we can understand. What happens next? Whoa, that would be monumental. Unlike anything we've ever experienced as a species, global task forces, probably the UN, stepping in to coordinate a response, careful communication to the public so no one freaks out, a defining moment in human history. It really is. A lot to think about. That impact, you know, of finding another intelligent civilization, it's mind-boggling. It really is. And it makes you realize we barely know anything yeah. about the universe yeah. and all the possibilities out there beyond our little planet. But that's what makes this search so cool, right? It's going into the unknown, a oh. quest for knowledge, pushing the boundary. Exactly. It's those basic human instincts, the desire to explore, to discover, you know, to connect with something bigger than ourselves. Speaking of connecting, we haven't talked much about the like the practical side of actually communicating. Let's say hypothetically we do pick up a signal yeah. and it's definitely artificial, not natural. What then? What are the next steps? How do you even begin to understand a message from, you know, aliens? Well, first things first, got to verify that signal independently. Use multiple observatories around the world. Make sure it's not an error, a glitch, or, you know, some prankster. So double check your work. Don't jump to conclusions. Exactly. Once the signal's verified, then the real challenge begins. Deciphering the message. That's going to be a massive undertaking. Probably a whole team of experts. Linguists, mathematicians, computer scientists, maybe even cryptologists. Like solving the world's most complex puzzle. Yeah. And you might not even succeed. Could take years, decades even. It wouldn't be easy, that's for sure. But even if we couldn't understand the message, you know, right away, just knowing it exists, that we're not alone, that would be huge for humanity. It would change everything, how we see ourselves, our place in the cosmos. Wow. It'd be a profound realization to know there's someone else out there, somewhere in that vast expanse, thinking, feeling maybe even trying to talk to us. It'd be humbling, no doubt. We'd have to reevaluate a lot of things. What we think about intelligence, technology, life itself. And who knows, maybe trying to figure out their message would actually teach us more about ourselves. That's interesting. Okay, but let's just say we do crack the code. What would the message say? What could they possibly be trying to tell us? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It could be anything, a greeting, some complex scientific formula, maybe a map to their planet. Or a warning about some cosmic danger. We just don't know. And that's part of what makes this search so amazing. It's a journey into the unknown with incredible possibilities, discoveries that could totally change our understanding of everything. It's almost too much to think about, all those possibilities. But it's definitely exciting. And it makes you wonder, what kind of tech is coming next? What could help us make even bigger leaps in this search? 
good point. The technology in this field is moving so fast. More power null telescopes and observatories are being built both on Earth and in space. The James Webb Space Telescope, launched a few years ago, is already giving us incredible views of the universe. We can study distant galaxies and exoplanets in ways we never could before, and who knows what future telescopes will be able to do. It really is mind-boggling. What else besides telescopes? What other technologies are playing a big role in this search for extraterrestrial intelligence? Well, like we talked about earlier, AI and machine learning are becoming super important for analyzing all that data the telescopes collect. They can sift through mountains of information, finding those tiny patterns and anomalies that humans might miss, like tireless assistance, you know, helping us find those needles in a haystack. It's amazing, using technology to enhance our own abilities, to see and hear things we couldn't otherwise. But are we doing anything else besides listening? Yeah. Any other ways we're actively looking for signs of, you know, aliens? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's a whole field dedicated to techno signatures. Basically, any observable evidence of technology, past or present, used by an extraterrestrial civilization. Techno signatures. That sounds cool. Yeah. What are some examples? So besides the radio signals, techno signatures could be, let's say, unusual changes in the light from a star. Maybe that indicates a huge structure, like a Dyson sphere. We also look for industrial pollution in the atmosphere as planets artificial light on their night sides. We even look for certain nuclear isotopes, stuff that could only be produced by advanced technology. So we're searching for, like, the fingerprints of alien tech, the <laughs> subtle hints that someone else was there before, kind of like being a cosmic detective, right? Uh -huh, exactly. And as our technology gets better, we get better at finding those subtle clues. We're always making new instruments, new techniques, pushing the limits of what's possible. It really is an exciting time to be in this field. But with all these new tools and approaches, what are the biggest challenges for SETI researchers right now? Well, that's a good question. I think one of the biggest challenges is just the immensity of space. The universe is so vast that even with our most powerful instruments, we're only seeing a tiny, tiny part of it. And then there's time. Civilizations, they might appear and disappear over periods of time that are way longer than all of human history. So even if there are other intelligent beings out there, the chances of us, you know, existing at the same time in the same part of space, it's pretty slim. It's kind of a humbling thought, isn't it? To realize that we might be looking for a signal that was sent millions, billions of years ago, or that the signals we're sending might not be received for who knows how long. It is. But that's part of what makes the search so powerful. It's a testament to our curiosity, our desire to understand the unknown and our hope that we're not alone. It's a reminder that we're part of something much, much bigger, like a cosmic tapestry woven from stardust and time. That's a beautiful way to put it. <laughs> and even if we never find absolute proof of alien life, this journey, it's incredibly valuable. Every signal we detect, every planet we discover, it adds to our understanding of the universe, our place in it. It's a journey of self-discovery as much as it is about discovering other intelligent beings. Exactly. And who knows, maybe one day that signal will come, the unmistakable proof that we're not alone. But until then, we keep searching. We do. Yeah. And it's worth every bit of effort, every sleepless night, every moment of awe and wonder. Because what we might find, it's beyond measure. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier about the wow. Signal. It's <laughs> such a captivating story, and I know our listeners would love to hear more. Ah, yes. The wow. Signal. One of the most fascinating mysteries in SETI, for sure. Like we said before, it was a powerful radio signal, narrowband, detected back on August 15th, 1977, by the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University. What made it so unique was the frequency. It was in a protected band where we're not supposed to transmit anything from Earth, so it's very unlikely to be human-made. So it was like hearing a voice in a silent room, mm -hmm. a signal that cut through all the noise. Yeah, exactly. And the structure of the signal was also remarkable. It got stronger over 72 seconds, peaked really sharply, then faded away just as quickly, like a bell curve, almost perfectly matching what we would expect from an interstellar beacon. It almost sounds too good to be true, like something straight out of science fiction. I know, right? And to make it even more intriguing, the signal came from a spot in the sky in the constellation Sagittarius, near a group of stars called Chi Sagittari. That area is pretty empty. No known planets or star systems that could explain the signal. So it came from basically nowhere. Wow, that's even more mysterious. Right. And even though we've tried over and over, no one has ever heard the wow signal again. It's a one-time event, a whisper from the cosmos that's kept scientists and everyone else guessing for decades. It's like a ghost story for scientists. 
a signal that appears once and then vanishes. Uh-huh. That's a great way to put it. And just like any good ghost story, it sparked so many theories about where it came from. Some think it was a natural phenomenon, something we just haven't discovered yet. Others are convinced it was a message sent on purpose by an alien civilization. I can see why. A signal that strong, that unique, from that part of space. It's hard not to jump to conclusions, but without more evidence, it's a mystery. Do you think we'll ever solve it? It's tough to say. Maybe new technology and new research will give us the answer someday. Or maybe the, wow, the signal will always be an enigma. A reminder of how vast and mysterious the universe is. Either way, it's a story that keeps us thinking, keeps us searching. And that's what's so amazing about all of this. It's the pursuit of knowledge, the exploration of the unknown, the chance to find something that could totally change how we understand the universe and our place in it. Exactly. It's a quest driven by our most basic human desires, curiosity, wonder, the thirst for knowledge. Well said. Well, on that note, I think it's time to give our listeners a chance to take all this in. We'll be back soon to wrap up our deep dive into the mysteries of signals from space. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've been talking about these signals from space. And before we finish up, I want to touch on something, something that always kind of gets me thinking, you know. What about the ethics of actually making contact with an alien civilization? It comes up in sci-fi all the time. But, you know, as, as our technology gets more advanced, it's something we got to think about. Seriously. Oh, for sure. Should we actually try to reach out? Yeah. To extraterrestrial civilizations? That's a really tough question. No easy answers. There are risks, benefits. It's a decision that needs a lot of thought, you know? What are some of those risks, the things we should be worried about? Well, misunderstanding. We have no idea what an alien civilization is thinking, what their intentions are. Even if we send a message and they answer, how do we know we're understanding them correctly? Something we send, thinking it's harmless, they might see it as a threat. Or the other way around. It's like lost in translation, but on this massive cosmic scale. And if we mess up that communication, things could go really bad. Exactly. And even if we understand each other perfectly, there's still the potential for cultural problems. You make contact with a civilization that's way more advanced. It could change everything. Our society, our values, even our sense of who we are. It's something to be very careful with. A lot of planning would be needed. Yeah, it's a lot to consider. But what about the good stuff? What are the potential benefits of making contact? Oh, they're huge. Imagine the scientific knowledge. Learning from another intelligent species, they might have already solved problems that we've been struggling with forever, or they might understand things about the universe that we can't even imagine yet. It'd be like opening a door to this whole new library of knowledge, sure. changing how we see the cosmos and ourselves. Exactly. And it wouldn't just be about science. Think about cultural exchange, sharing art, music, literature, ideas. It would enrich us in ways we can't even imagine. Amazing. But in the end, it's a huge decision, isn't it? To contact them or not could have big consequences. How do we even approach this as a species, I mean? I think we have to work together. Global cooperation, everyone talking openly, scientists, ethicists, policymakers, the public. We have to really weigh those risks and benefits, make a choice that reflects our values and what we want for the future. So this search for extraterrestrial intelligence, it's not just science, it's philosophy, yeah. ethics. It makes us think about who we are, where we came from, where we're going. Absolutely. It's a journey we're taking together. Whether we actually find proof of alien life or not, the search itself is a testament to who we are, our curiosity, our ingenuity, that hope that maybe we're not alone. Well said. Well, on that note, it's time to wrap up our deep dive into the mysterious world of signals from space. We've gone from the early days of SETI to the newest technology, even the ethical challenges of reaching out to another civilization. It's been quite a journey. Hope our listeners have enjoyed exploring all of this with us, the wonders and possibilities of the universe. Me too. We hope you're feeling curious, inspired to learn more about space exploration and the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Don't forget to check out the show notes. We've got links to some of the stuff we talked about today. And always remember, the universe is full of mysteries, just waiting for us to uncover them. Who knows what we'll find in the years to come. That's a great thought. And that brings us to the end of our deep dive. Hope you enjoyed this journey into the mysteries of space. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Pascamon Podcasts. Until next time, keep looking up and keep wondering.